What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create a pulse stream inside of a Siemens S7 1200 PLC using Siemens TIA portal without using the clock memory that's already been pre-assigned to the PLC. Now the reason why we might want to do that is because we might be working with a PLC that doesn't have the ability to have clock memory assigned to it. So how do we do it when we don't have that facility? Well, we'll show you in this video. Now before we can actually get started, what I'd like you to do is give the video a like, comment below to let me know you're watching, and if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're not watching us on YouTube, go over to YouTube now and hit the subscribe button anyways. It helps us out a lot, and I thank you for doing so. Anyways, let's get back to today's video. Alright, so I've got Siemens TIA portal open already and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a brand new project and then what we're going to do is set up the hardware configuration and set up clock memory inside of the PLC and just show you how we actually set that up first of all. But we're not going to use it. What we're then going to do is jump into OB1 and then actually create that clock memory using Lala Logic just in case we don't have clock memory available in the PLC that we're working with. So first of all, I'm just going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this Chris Pulse Stream Program. And I'm just going to then say create. I'm not going to go too in depth with how we actually create the project. That there is covered on other videos. If you just go to our YouTube channel, you'll see how to create a Siemens TIA portal program from scratch. You can just watch that video there. So here we're just going to select configure a device, add new device, and then what we're going to do is I'm just going to have the laptop pull up the information from the PLC in terms of its hardware. So to do this, just open up unspecified CPU, select the PLC that we're working with, and just select it as a version 3, as that's the PLC that I've got over here that's connected to the laptop. I'm then just going to say add. And then what it will do is it'll then open up our hardware configuration with the blank CPU. I'm then going to upload that system information from our PLC into the laptop. So there we go. You'll see now we've got a yellow notification. I'm just going to say detect and it'll then open up our hardware detection. And now what it's going to do is using our Ethernet cable here, it's then going to hunt out that PLC that's on this Ethernet network. And there it is there. And you'll notice the IP address 192.168.10.1. Our laptop is currently set to 192.168.10.5. I'm then going to select detect. And what it's now going to do, like I mentioned before, it's going to upload our hardware information into this PLC program. Right, now that that's done, what we're going to do first of all is set up the actual clock memory itself. And to do this, we can either double click on the CPU or we can right click and go to properties. And a bottom window pane will open up here. And on the left hand side, about just halfway down, is a area called system and clock memory if we just select that you'll actually see here system memory bits and clock memory bits we're going to ignore system memory bits and we're going to go down to clock memory bits and you'll notice that it's not selected it's not enabled now this means that no clock memory is being assigned to this cpu what i'm going to do here is i'm then going to check this box which will now enable clock memory once we download this project to the plc and you'll see inside of here address of clock memory byte is set to zero which means memory byte zero m0.0 to m0.7 is now assigned to clock frequencies and what a clock frequency is is simply just a bit that will turn on and off at a set clock frequency. So you can see here, we've got M0.0 .0 as our 10 hertz clock pulse, M0.1 as our 5 hertz clock pulse, M0.5 is our 1 hertz clock pulse or our 1 second clock pulse, all the way down to M0.7, which is our half hertz clock pulse. Now, what you can do is you can actually change this memory byte. You don't have to keep it at zero. To change it, just click inside the box and type in another value, let's say 20, for example, and then say enter, and the 
bits will actually change inside of the clock memory. But you've got to be careful when you're working with this. What you don't want to do is just modify the clock memory to any random memory byte because that memory byte might already be used inside of the program. And what you don't want to do is set that up to now be clock memory and then have your outputs flashing on and off every half a second because that's what you've set it to inside of the clock memory itself. You've got to be careful when you're working with this. Now, I'm currently just going to leave this unchecked because we're not going to use the clock memory. That's the easy way out. What we're going to do is we're actually going to show you how to create a pulse stream using ladder logic because there are PLCs out there which don't have the functionality of clock memory. So how do we do it when we don't have access to these bits? Well, what we could do is we could then open up our program blocks, open up OB1 and write a program. Now, the way that I want this program to work is I'm going to have a contact here and my contact is going to be tied to M0.0, .0, which is going to be my enable signal. And what I want this enable signal to do is when it's on, my output coil will turn on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. And it's going to keep on repeating that process on, off, on, off, on, off until M0.0 .0 turns off. I'm just going to rename this tag. I'm just going to call it enable and then say change. Now, if I just add in here my output coil and I tie this to Q0.0 .0, and I just left it at that, that's not going to work. What's going to happen here is when M0.0 .0 turns on, so is Q0.0 .0, and that's it. What I need to do is I need to have some sort of instruction that's going to create a delay from turning it on and a delay for turning it off. How do we create a delay? Well, I hope everybody said timers. We can use a timer. So what I want to do is I want to drop down our timer operations and I want to drag and drop our TON in between the contact and the coil. It's going to ask me for a data block. I'm just going to select that data block there. I'm just going to leave it as default. That's fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another timer. So what this will allow me to do is it will give me a timer for the on period and a timer for the off period. I'm then going to branch down again, create a normally open contact, and then drag my coil into that third rung. So what we've got so far is our enable signal controlling two timers. We then have a contact controlling our output. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this contact here to the output of my first timer. So to do this, just double click inside of the address, drop down the little menu icon, and I'm going to look for my first timer, which is DB1, expand that and select Q. There we go. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have our timers controlling each other. I want this timer, DB1 first of all, to run as soon as our enable signal turns on. I then want that timer to then control our second timer after it's finished. So to do that, we're just going to put a normally closed contact before this timer and a normally open contact before this timer here. Now what we need to do is assign these to the opposite timers. Don't worry, it'll all make sense once we start to run it and I'll start to explain how this works. So for this, I'm just going to drop this menu down, select my second timer and select its Q. There we go. And for this contact, I'm going to tie this to the first timer and select its Q. And that there is effectively the program designed. So how is this going to work? Well, when the enable signal turns on, this contact will close. And because these two timers are off, these contacts here will remain in their default state. So this contact will be closed and these two contacts will be open, meaning this timer will begin to run and our output coil is currently off. The timer will run for one second and then after one second, it'll then turn on and then close both of these contacts. This contact will then turn on our output. So it's going to run for one second and then turn on our output. And then what it's going to do is wait another second. After the second timer has elapsed one second later, what it will do is then turn on its output, which will open this contact here. Therefore, turning off our first timer, turning off these two contacts here, turning off my output coil, turning off my second timer, turning off this contact here, turning off my second timer, 
which therefore resets my entire network back to zero. The output will now be off. This contact will be closed again. It'll run this timer for another second. After the second has elapsed, these two contacts will turn on. Turning on my output coil, running my second timer again. My second timer will run for a further one second. After that, it'll reset everything back to zero again. So let's save our work. And then what we're gonna do is download this to the PLC. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click my enable flag and then modify it to one. When I modify it to one, watch my Q0.0 .0 here. It'll remain off for one second, then it will turn on for one second, then it will turn off for one second, then it will turn on for one second. And it'll keep on repeating as long as our enable signal is on. And there we go. It begins to flash. So like I say, what's happening here is we're having these two timers controlling the on and the off state. So like I say, initially, both timers are going to be off. That means that all of these contacts will be in their default state, allowing this timer to begin to run, as you can see there. After the one second has elapsed, it'll then turn on these two contacts and turn on this timer, allowing it to run for one second, creating that on period of one second, whilst turning on my output coil. After the one second that it's been on for, this timer then turns on, opening this contact here, which therefore resets this entire network back to zero, closing this contact and allowing this timer to run again for a further one second. Now, how do we create a pulse stream for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, half a second? All we do is we modify the two timer values. So instead of us having it for one second, we would then change that to half a second. We would then change it for two seconds, three seconds. And this now gives us complete flexibility because if I want this to be off for three seconds, on for two seconds, I can just change the individual timers. If I just come offline here, select yes. And if I say I want it to be off for three seconds, I would change this timer here to three seconds as this is controlling this contact, which controls the output turning on. And then after the three seconds, I want it to run for two seconds. So I set the second time at the two seconds, which controls the on period. Save that work there, download that to the PLC. So it's currently on, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And that's it, that's our pulse stream designed inside of a PLC without using the actual clock memory. It gives us a lot more flexibility as well because clock memory is on and off for the same time. So if we want to have a variant on time to our off time, all we would do is just change our two timers and this gives us the ability to do this. Now that design there is universal to all PLCs. So we can design this in Siemens TIA Portal, we can design it in Step 7, we can then transfer it over to RS Logix 500 or Studio 5000, Mitsubishi GX Works 2. This design here will work in every PLC. So if your PLC doesn't have the functionality of clock memory built internally, then all we need to do is just create it using ladder logic, using two timers. And that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial of how to create the pulse stream using ladder logic. And I hope to see you again next time. Enjoy your week.